welcome back to another edition of Level Up Cooking. Let me take that off real quick. So, I'm really excited about this week. Uh, I've just had so much good feedback. I've had so many people that have just reached out to help and been so critical in just the continuing of, of me doing these videos. And um, so just, I really wanted to do a few episodes where you all know that I'm listening to your ideas. Um, if you haven't heard yet, I started a Discord channel that's specifically for people that enjoy these shows. There's a spot where you can literally suggest ideas. You can um, give me some good feedback about episodes that you like and ask questions. Um, there's also a Patreon, our Patreon that we have now. You can jump on that. There's a $5 tier, a $10 tier, all that money is just gonna go to me continuing to do these shows. Um, but also there's some perks involved. Uh, the $5 tier, I'm gonna do a shout out for you here on the channel. And uh, you're also gonna get into a special chat uh, that I check on a daily basis within the Discord. The second tier in that, the $10 tier, you actually get to vote on upcoming episodes and you get to see the proof that Jacob sends to me before the final publish goes out. So you can kind of see some of those some of those little bitty mistakes. Normally Jacob's pretty good at editing out my mistakes, but when you make as many as I do, it's tough to catch all of them. Um, you know, it's probably the hardest part of his job is making me look as good as he does. So uh, just, if you can, if you can help, if you can donate, if you can support us by joining the Patreon, or if you just want to get into that Discord channel, all those links are down below. But today, um, we're, we got a really cool episode. I know that all of you all were thinking this year about your New Year's resolutions, right? So every year, I typically sit down and I'm like, oh, New Year's resolutions, I gotta think of what I'm gonna do. Um, and I bet nine times out of 10, one of them is get healthier, eat healthier, exercise, get in shape. It never happens, but it's, an, it's a nice growing tool, you know? Like, uh, plus, you know, I think for the first three months, man, my doctor, he's like, yeah, way to go. Um, so this is kind of an episode that was requested, which is a little bit of healthy stuff, um, joined with another thing that I'm gonna try to continue to do in the past episodes, just time-wise, I've kind of cut out some of the prep, but a lot of people are interested in seeing how those prepped items work, how, how to cut that, how to slice this, peel that, so I really wanna show you guys those techniques instead of just jumping forward till the end of the episode because that's what it's about, it's about learning. So if that's what you're interested in, even if it's an idea like, I wanna see how you would utilize this protein. Throw them in, jump in the Discord, let me know. Um, but today we're gonna start off with just a really fresh, nice fruit salad. I know that seems very simple. Um, this is something that I used to do when I was in the catering business. Um, it involves just any type of fruit, you can go find whatever you want to from, I've got watermelon today, I've got some kiwis, got some berries, got some mango. Um, but the big thing is, is that there's a really nice citrus, agave, mint, kind of, I wanna call it a dressing that goes on top of it. It helps brighten everything and also the lemon juice helps it to last longer. Just like any salad, you know, just coleslaw, potato salad. If you think about it, the next day, is the better day, right? Like the first day it's made, it's delicious, it's great, but that second day, everything's kind of had time to marinate and meld well together. So kind of the same thing here. But let's let's hop into it. Um, the first thing I'm gonna start with is the big boy. I got us a seedless watermelon. Now everyone has their own techniques, everyone has their own way of doing things. I personally, um, you know, just through the years, I've probably changed the way I cut it a million times. There's all those videos and TikToks out there. But the main thing that I always try to do is make sure that whatever technique I'm using, I'm stable, right? This watermelon, <clears throat> where the yellow is, whenever I'm buying watermelon, I'm always looking for a discoloration. Don't look for the perfectly green one. Most of the time that's gonna be underripe. You want something that's been able to sit, that's what that is. That's been sitting on the ground like this and it's had time to sit there and finish ripening. That discoloration actually means that it's that it's probably gonna be a little bit sweeter because it's had more time. So <clears throat> start off by taking off the ends, stand it up, and then I just go right down the sides. Okay. 
try to clear best I can without taking off too much of the, 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 the meat of it, which would be the red part. You do want to take off the white. That's that, you know, part of the rind. It's called the pith. It's kind of bitter. Doesn't really taste that good. And it's not as pretty, you know. Whenever you put it in this salad, you want all those beautiful, vibrant colors to come out. All right? Flip it over and catch those pieces that you missed. Just clean it up a little bit. And again, you just want to get as much of that white off as you can. We're going to take some of this. I'm going to cut all this up later because I don't know about you guys, but my wife loves fruit. But for now, I'm just going to get a little bit of it just to make this small fruit salad. The big thing for when you're cutting it is you want to be kind of consistent with all your cuts. Now, some of the things I'm going to add, like the berries and, uh, and some of the other items, that might not look exactly the same, but I'm cutting the, the ones that actually I do have to put a knife to in a way that kind of matches up with those, okay? Just to make sure that everything's consistent. So we're, we've got our, our watermelon in there. Let me pull these strawberries out. I've already washed all this as well. We'll drop our blueberries in there. Right. So when you're uh, when you're talking about strawberries, there's lots of different ways. There's lots of different tools. You've actually got those hullers that pull it out. You can use a, a melon baller if you want to that pull it out. But realistically, all I do because I also don't want to have that white in there as well. There's nothing wrong with it, but again, it's just about the color. Pull off the top. Take off most of that white part that's a little under right. And then again, you just want to match it up to the way you cut your melon to the best of your ability. And again, with this fruit salad, guys, whatever you want to use, whatever your favorite fruit is, whatever looks good at the store, that's what you're looking for. Don't, don't necessarily go in there and say, oh, I've got to use the exact same stuff that Mr. J did. That's not the case. It's just, this is what looked good. This is what uh, tasted good. Most of the time I do try to have like one good sized melon for no other reason other than it's a nice filler. If you like honeydew, if you like cantaloupe, anything like that, uh, feel free to use those as well. This is just a nice simple snack that because of the lemon juice, that agave nectar, it'll hold in the fridge a little bit longer so you don't have to throw it out after a day. So we have our blueberries, we have our watermelon. Um, next up, like I grabbed some kiwis. Uh, just just to, you know, to have another color in there. I don't know if you all have seen some of the best ways to do a kiwi, but the way that I like to do it is I take off the ends. Then I grab a spoon, set it up right, and then basically just kind of work my way through the skin with that spoon, okay? You can definitely just cut it off if that works for you. <clears throat> but you do end up losing a lot of that, a lot of that meat of the, the kiwi that you could have saved. And then that same nice cut to add to our mix. Maybe a little under right, but it is bright, bright green. Some of the other stuff that we're going to do today, this is just a nice little starter for. Uh, we're going back to our uh, our fallout book, if you couldn't tell from my intro with my, my fun mask that I have. That was an anniversary gift a long time ago. We're, we're going back to the fallout cookbook today, which is exciting for me. I haven't actually played in a long time, but after doing a few of the episodes that I've done in the past, it just made me want to. Hearing some of those words, you know, um, today is good, you know, we're going to work on uh, what they're calling a poached angler. Uh, but leaning towards that healthy side, um, it's we're going to use cod, and it's going to be a poached cod fi uh, fish. I'm going to tell you a couple techniques that you can do um, to really, you know, make that dish pop. Again, on your on your mangoes, same thing with that watermelon. Look for that discoloration. It's going to be a little bit riper. They're not great this time of year, but if you find one that's got some red, it's got some yellows, it's got some greens, most of the time it's going to be sweet enough to use. You can tell from looking at it that it is a little underripe because it's not as bright yellow as you want it to be, but that doesn't mean that it won't benefit this salad. Plus, once I add that lemon juice, it'll actually start to ripen it again. So take this, treat that skin, 
kind of like you would do with an avocado, if you're uh, familiar with that technique. <clears throat> and then once you've got it cut like that, I just take my knife. Right into the bowl. I'm trying to stay away from all that white at the bottom. That's why I'm not going as deep into it and just trying to get mostly yellow. Pop that into the bowl. So now if you look at it, we have all these beautiful colors that are working together in here. Now the next thing that we have, we're going to take some fresh mint. And um, with mint, unlike cilantro and some other ones, you definitely want to get those stems as much as you can out of there. Just work with the leaves. Um, I always try to find some of the small, some of the large. Uh, large ones are going are to be more, um, they're going to smell a lot better. But once they start to, to wilt, they actually start to brown. The younger leaves, the smaller ones, you're going to get a lot better color out of. So normally if you put them in there, they, you're going to see that green kind of pop. run your knife through those it's not necessarily got to be the prettiest thing in the world but what you do want is small pieces because you don't want someone to get some uh, mint stuck in their teeth that's no fun so that goes in next up I'm going to take this lemon one of the things that uh, that I do with my lemons and limes and any citrus that you're going to juice is that you roll it you want it to be nice and soft when you start take my zester and pull some of that lemon zest off there straight into the bowl. If you don't have this tool, um, cheese grater will work. Uh, there is, you can even just kind of take your knife if you want and just get as close to the skin as you can to where you can see your knife through the skin, making sure that you're not going all the way down. Try to get as little white as possible. and then just run your knife through it real, real, real fine. And you'll get that same effect. If you do do this, I would go through it and kind of fine dice it best you can because bigger pieces like that will definitely show up. But it gives you the same kind of effect. And then we're gonna take, and if you remember from the last one we did, and cheat this lemon because we don't want to have to deal with the seeds when we're juicing it. Put that lemon juice in there. Set all that off to the side. And then um, after that, go ahead and add your agave nectar, okay? Now this is basically how sweet do you want it, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put a little under fourth of a cup in there. Because again, also this is gonna help preserve it just like that lemon juice is. And then this one here, this is a pomegranate. Um, as far as a pomegranate goes, you either people either love them or hate them. Um, it's, it's extremely healthy. It's one of the super fruits, just like our blueberries in there. And if you think about it, this is kind of a super fruit salad, um, super food salad, sorry, because of what all we're using. Um, but if you look, if you feel on a pomegranate, you can kind of feel where the, it bulges out in the wedges. You know, it's, it's a little rounder, but it, you can even look at it a little bit and see that there are kind of like these spots where you can score it. So you just find those, take your knife down and just kind of score it. Take off the top. And then you can literally just kind of crack it open. Um, the, all that white is no good, but all you really need to do is just kind of pop out. I'm going to take one quarter of it here, one, one bit of it that we've gotten. Pull the skin out and just kind of work your fingers to pop them all free. Right? Add that super fruit in there as well. So we just stir this around. All that fresh fruit, that agave nectar, that lemon juice, the lemon zest. 
and that goes into my bowl right here. Just beautiful and delicious. We have this fresh fruit salad kind of to start everybody off with, and they're just it's just gonna really kind of get your palate ready for a nice light dish. Now we're gonna look at the main course. The main course is gonna be that poached cod, what they're calling in the book poached angler, just to kind of make it fun for the uh, for those Fallout fans. Um, it's just gonna be um, a nice uh, vegetable stock and coconut milk with a few other, you know, some ginger, some garlic, and a few vegetables, all kind of poached into this beautiful pan. Then you add that that uh, that fish in there. So you're gonna get to see all that, but let's just go ahead and prep a little bit of that first. All right, so what you need, um, we're gonna take a finger of this, of this ginger here. So if you've never peeled or dealt with fresh ginger before, there is a little trick that, uh, that a little bit easier than using a knife or an actual peeler because there's all these like little grooves and things. You just take the back, go down every finger. You're gonna come all the way down these just kind of get into every little corner. The fact that the spoon is beveled a little bit, it helps get into some of those tight spaces to get all that ginger peeled off. Once you start getting to that point that you can't get there, break that ginger again into another finger. And you're just, you're taking off less of the actual ginger itself and just taking off most of the skin. And then you're just gonna wanna cut it down just like you would if you were doing slices of garlic. I know that I, you know, I kind of showed you the way to crush garlic um, a few videos ago with your knife um, and make kind of a garlic paste. This is going to be a way to try to get this as fine as you can. You can leave it in big pieces, but if you uh, know anything about ginger or you've ever, you know, eaten a lot of ginger, if you eat a lot of soup, it's pretty powerful. So a lot of Asian dishes feature ginger because it's going to be a standout flavor. So once you get to this point, just keep on chopping, keep on running your knife through until you see that it's as fine as you want it to be. Okay. And then we're going to take our you know, fancy little dish here, pop that in there for our, our dish here in a minute. All right. Next, we're going to have our garlic. Now, I did show in one of the last videos, you know, an easy way to kind of crush your garlic to chop it up. Um, I do have, you know, garlic smashers, you know, they're completely usable, right? Guys, like, it's not like you're going to get shunned if you use a garlic smasher. Like, it's just for me, a lot of times what ends up happening, depending on how fresh your garlic is, is you've got to put more in there than you actually need to get out what you want, right? So you end up, right, with, like, I got that in there, right? Which is great. That's, that's a good amount. But if you open this up bring it back out there's a lot of this garlic it's just kind of stuck in there so I don't know I mean even the nice ones that I get whenever I worked at restaurants they all did that so I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of them but no big deal we're gonna do four cloves of garlic for this recipe so we have that garlic ready to go um, so the recipe calls for shiitake mushrooms I went to the store the whole shiitake didn't look that great to me so I didn't just get shiitakes I got some sliced shiitakes because they look better, but normally I get all whole mushrooms. The reason I get all whole mushrooms is because once they're like this, it's tough to wash them. So these guys here I've taken over to the sink. I washed them. I took a brush to them just to knock off the big pieces of dirt. So what I like to do is give myself a flat surface, turn it on its side, and then you can just go down and cut them. Okay. I'm not going to do all these because I don't need all of them but I did want you to see the process. So you take off the side, that gives you a stable cutting surface. So we have our cut mushrooms. I'll go ahead and put them in here. And then that is gonna go with that uh, sliced shiitake that I have over there um, into the broth, okay? Next we have our bok choy. Bok choy is um, just a nice leafy green that you see in Asian food. Uh, most of the time what you're wanting to use 
is a, like where it starts to bulb out. Most of the time that's gonna be a little fibrous. So you wanna take that part off. Right. You can use it. It's another one that's great for like, you know, doing in stocks and things like that. And then what I like to do just to make it nice and simple. Again, this is something that you really wanna wash before you use it is I'll stack up a few of them, slice down, and then I kind of go on a little bit of a bias down the middle, you know, just to get some cut, you know, cool cut pieces in there. We'll do that again. I think uh, six pieces of this is gonna be plenty. That gives you some of your greens, some of your whites, you know, just to have that nice flavor in there. Last thing, <clears throat> you know, we just did that zest of a lot or zest of a lemon in the fruit salad. We're gonna get some lime zest here. And I'm just gonna put it straight into this little container. All right, so the zest of one lime and then the juice of one lime, again, rolling it to loosen up all those juices that are in there. And the cheek it. And I'm just going to put it straight in there with our lime zest. And this one does not have too many seeds, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this as well. Okay. So, nice, beautiful prep, ready to go for our, um, our nice poached fish. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take all this prep that I've done. Again, right here we have our vegetable stock that, that I made. Right here, we've got our bok choy, we have our mushrooms, we have our lime juice with lime zest. I've got lemongrass. It actually asks for a lemon stalk, a lemongrass stalk. If you've ever, you know, used lemongrass stalks, it actually feels like a really strong, um, like piece of wood. And what you do with those is basically you're just flavoring your liquid. So you literally break it in certain points. In a kitchen, you'll see guys running around just smacking them on the table because that releases the flavor, right? You'll see them hit, take it, and hit it with the back of their knife that releases all that lemony flavor. They did not have any at the two or three grocery stores that I went to, so I did find some lemongrass paste. It's gonna work the exact same way, um, just to flavor our broth. Um, we have a little bit of fish sauce. That's gonna add that umami, that kind of flavor pat punch, um, and then our olive oil to start the saute. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna get all this going. I'm gonna serve it with a little bit of rice that I've already got prepared. Uh, and it's just gonna look beautiful. So we're gonna start cooking this up. So here's the fun part. This is where we've taken all that prep that we've done that you've gotten to see this time. And we're gonna put it all into practice here. Um, so first off, I have a nice, nice hot skillet. Okay, I'm gonna take and add in our olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and do our ginger and our garlic. Not necessarily in that order, because that was the garlic. Here is the ginger. Okay. And then we're gonna let that cook for just a minute. What you wanna do is you wanna start to smell that ginger and that garlic just being very, very like aromatic, because that's what it's for. It's all for that beautiful flavor that we're gonna get. And once you start seeing that garlic get a little translucent, uh, you want to add that bok choy and your mushrooms. So we're going to add in our bok choy here. That piece is a little big. I'm going to set it off the side. Okay. Okay. And we're going to add in our mushrooms. Don't use your hand to stir. That was dumb. <laughs> but. And again, I have a kind of a shiitake and portobello mushroom mix. So, you know, it's it's whatever mushrooms you wanna use. The recipe calls for shiitakes, but, so we'll put in our shiitakes and we'll put in a nice big handful of our baby portobellas. Okay, and we'll just start letting that cook down. Basically what you're wanting to see here is you want to see those mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms are, it's a lot of water, right? So as you're cooking mushrooms, they're gonna shrink. Um, so you want them to start cooking down, but you don't want them to get to the point where they start to turn colors. You just want them to start shrinking a little bit before you add in your broth and all the other items that are gonna flavor this, okay? This is also a time where you could go ahead and break your, 
um, or well, not really break, but just kind of bend and snap around your, your lemongrass and add them to it, because it's gonna start, air, um, you know, with its aromatic, start flavoring everything that's in there. But that really is gonna really hit home once the broth goes in. And this does look like a lot, and we do have to have space for our fish, but like I said, that green is gonna wilt down, those mushrooms are gonna shrink a little bit, and then we'll be able to find spots to put our four pieces of fish. We're using a really nice cod today. Went by the store, had it cut. So I'm really excited to have that. Okay, so now that we've started to see those mushrooms are starting to kind of shrink down, they're starting to turn colors. We're almost there where we want to start adding everything. The next thing we're gonna add at this point now is I'm gonna go ahead and add my, um, my lemongrass paste right into the center there. Then I'm gonna add in that lime juice and our lime zest. It's gonna be our first liquid in there. A nice sizzle. Oh man, if y'all could just smell this. You can kind of see off to the side that I have our rice ready to go. It's just a nice base to put any type of fish dish on and obviously any Asian dish, which this is kind of leaned towards the Asian style. All right, so at this point, we can start adding our other liquids. Start off here, I've got our veg stock. Again, I know that you know at the, um, at the past episodes, you've seen me make that beef stock. You can do that all yourself. It's very easy, very simple, but also there's nothing wrong with going to the store and grabbing a stock or a broth uh, just remember, you know, if you go get them, look at the sodium level on the back. That's, you know, that, that kind of helps you because if you look at the sodium levels, you'll see how much, you know, if you need to add more salt as far as flavor goes, because a lot of those broths are going to be a lot saltier than stocks are, and it's just the way they're made. So we've added our broth, you know, and obviously that's going to slow the cooking down. Um, I've left it at room temperature. You don't want to put it in there cold. Cold is going to stop the cooking. This just kind of slows it down for a minute. I'm gonna add in our fish sauce. That's that umami flavor. That flavor that you can't really put your finger on it what it is, but it just, it helps out so much with that pungent flavor. It also stinks, but it's okay. It just smells bad. And then the last thing that we're gonna add to this, turn it up just a little bit, this is coconut milk, okay? So a lot of those Thai dishes, um, Indian dishes, a lot of Asian dishes use coconut milk. Um, this is going to be a lot of really good flavor and it's going to be kind of the finish for our poaching liquid. Something that I would say if you are looking to do more fish dishes um, that I would invest in um, is a fish spatula. Uh, what a fish spatula is, is, I mean, it's a spatula, right? Not a big deal, but it's a spatula that is set up for fish. It's extremely flexible, kind of like a fillet knife, um, and it's, it's vented. That way you're not, you're not doing too much damage to the fish and the fish will not get stuck. So if it's on the pan and you slide underneath with a regular spatula, sometimes the fish will catch and then it breaks because it's so fragile. This just lets you be a little more gentle whenever you're doing fish, especially if you're gonna poach a fish. Poaching is great. It's a great way to cook, it's very flavorful, but also it makes that fish extremely tender and delicate. So when you go to start moving it around and doing your beautiful plate up, um, it can it can break in a heartbeat and that is no fun. So we're gonna let this come back up to where it's kind of boiling um, I'm just gonna put that on top uh, and explain what I've done with the rice. Um, so on the rice really simple uh, cooked off some basmati rice uh, Added a little bit of dill salt pepper and instead of going with my normal butter, which you know, I love my butter um, But I did olive oil in here this time You know just staying on that healthy theme and it's very simple. I mean, you can do everything from going and getting one of those steamer bags, which, I mean, to be honest with you, those rice bags, are they overcook quite a bit. Basmati is a long grain, nice and flavorful, accepts flavor really well. Jasmine's another rice that I like to use, um, but just up to you what, you what your preferred rice is. All right, so now that we are to that point where our liquid is back up to a nice simmer, again, we have this nice, beautiful um, uh, cod. Uh, that's what the recipe calls for, but again, this is any type of fish that you like to use. You like salmon, you like haddock, you like anything. You just you just pick your favorite. 
okay? And what you're gonna wanna do is, is basically you're gonna take this, kinda nestle it into a spot, all right? Let it find its little home in there. Okay, and then we're gonna season a little bit of pepper. You can go a little heavy on the salt and pepper because you're not putting it directly on the fish. This is seasoning all that broth and the broth can be cooked down to make like a, a, a sauce, but realistically, all your flavor is gonna happen while it's cooking in there, okay? So add your salt and pepper. We're gonna take our lid, put it back on there. The fish is gonna take about five to seven minutes depending on how thick your fish is. Just make sure it's nice and tender when it comes out. And then once you finish, it's gonna be time for plate, time for a drink, time to taste. This is uh, some of your all's favorite part of all my videos is where we you know, make our special drink to go along with it. Today I've already started out with club soda in the bottom. This drink is called Ware's Brew. It's also from the Fallout Cookbook. If you go to the very back of the cookbook, they've got a couple different drinks. Some that are you know, alcoholic, some not. Um, this one uses bourbon. So we got the um, club soda in there. I'm gonna add us some ice. And then it gets two tablespoons of maple syrup. If anybody knows anything about drinking, this is just a darker, sweeter flavor than like a simple syrup. So you're gonna get a lot more of that, you know, just kind of amber, you know, full flavored, you know, syrup taste. And then it's gonna be a half a cup of some bourbon. Just gonna eyeball it a little bit. This is gonna be kind of up to the top with a little bit left over there. And then you finish it with some fresh cut mint. Grab myself, I'll just use my, uh, give it a quick little stir. That's a good one right there. You all will enjoy that. And let's just go ahead and plate up this final meal. Again, I appreciate everybody coming, watching the show. Um, we, you know, we did our beautiful fruit salad, showed off some of those knife cuts. Um, I have to thank uh, Rogs for that idea. That's his gamer tag. That's who uh, gave me the idea in our Discord. Um, the healthy option came from Check Mike D. Um, he gave me that, uh, that idea to try to run some healthier options. I'm going to continue to do those, scatter them out throughout. Um, so again, just want to make sure you all knew that I listened to your suggestions. I listened to your ideas because this is all about trying to help you all into the world that maybe you feel a little uncomfortable in, which is in the kitchen so that you can eat and enjoy your food. Um, so we're going to plate up this final plate. Again, fruit salad. Got our nice uh, kind of maple julep uh, wares brew. Um, and then I went ahead and I made off this dill flavored basmati rice. Put a nice bed of that down in the middle. Uh, another another you know reminder of everything that could have used butter in this recipe. I skipped that and ended up using our olive oil. I'm gonna take our lid off here of our beautifully poached cod. This is that that fish spatula I told you all you should invest in here. Try to find us a really nice piece to plate up. You can see how just delicate that fish has become. Lay that right over top. And then you can kind of get in here and get some of those beautiful vegetables that we use today. Scat them around the outside, making sure to get some of those beautiful mushrooms, those beautiful greens. You don't want to miss out on any of that. I'm going to set that there. I always like to finish a poached dish with a little bit of salt just to kind of, because a lot of that, you know, flavor from the poached dish is in there. A little bit of salt on top and a little bit of our poaching liquid. Not too much. And there we go. Uh, again, I just want to thank everybody for all your support. I have so many discords that I'm in based off the video game that I play and all those players have just been so inviting. 
Um, they've made me my own channels. Um, I've had a lot of help um, from the Guildmaster slash uh, Discord lead, the person that admin that's in charge of it. They've just been super helpful. Um, you know, a few people that have, you know, gone even further. Uh, Star Slayer, uh, you know who you are. I appreciate you for building that Discord um, that's specifically for Level Up Cooking and all that you've done there to help me out. Um, I want to thank my Patreon, Karate Kid. Thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate you so much. If you do want that extra, you know, that that um, that early look at the episode, maybe with a few mistakes that I have made in it, definitely subscribe to our Patreon. There's a $5 tier, $10 tier. All that money goes right back into me doing this because we do want to continue this. Um, I want to thank Double L Farms, even though they weren't used here, I still like to mention those people that have been so helpful um, with all that they've done for us. Again, jump into the new Discord. Um, that link is, uh, is in the channel. The link for the Patreon is in the channel. Uh, link for Double L Farms is in the channel. I've also linked in there the Amazon link for the book that I, the, well, at least the first book that I was using, which is the ESO Cookbook. And get in that Discord and start sending me your ideas. I obviously listen to them and I want to continue too. Now, I'm going to grab a fork and I'm going to get everybody's favorite taste tester to come over here and see if she enjoys this dish. Daddy should have had forks ready, but he did not. So I'm going to get her a little bit of rice, small piece of that fish, hold that. One second. You're gonna taste that and then you're gonna taste the fruit salad, okay? I'm gonna get a little bit. Go we'll right along with her. I think she's the biggest fan of mushrooms, so I left that off hers, but I definitely will give them a taste. All right. Very clean flavored. Very nice. That that coconut milk is so good. You wanna what what do you want? Be strawberry? So again, this uh, fruit salad, that's got that agave nectar. It's got the lemon juice, and it also has um, the lemon zest. I love fruit. <laughs> Khaleesi loves fruit. All right, we'll taste that. Nice, light, and you can fulfill some of those, I'm gonna call them lies for myself, but fulfill some of those New Year's resolutions that normally get overlooked by maybe doing something healthy. You score yourself some points. Again, please like, follow, subscribe. All the things we need to do. All the things that, thank you baby. All the things that you need to do to help us continue to put out this content for you. Thank you so much for all that you're already doing. And continue to try these recipes out. Let me know how they go. Let me know how they taste um, as you continue to game and enjoy that part of your life you can also take that time to spend some time in the kitchen and level up there as well